this is Surya Saha and welcome to the Insurex Story Podcast, the platform to spread knowledge on insurance innovation, digital disruptions and entrepreneurship. Our website insurexstory.com and we are available on Spotify, Apple and Google as well as Amazon. Today we will discuss on the topic, the future of underwriting and customer experience in commercial insurance. And for now, I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Wendy Crossley, who is the Global Director for Underwriting Automation and Transformation at Willis Tower Watson. Wendy is a well-known industry professional with a reputation for effectively delivering company-wide transformation, generating more efficient, targeted underwriting results. In her role, Wendy leads digital underwriting transformation projects for global commercial line insurance clients. She also manages the design, development, and implementation of market-leading technology propositions to underwriting compositions around the world. Prior to Willis, Wendy was with Zurich North America, where she served as Underwriting Solutions Director, Operations and Technology. In this role, she successfully led underwriting landscape transformation projects across the commercial and speciality insurance business units. So Wendy, a warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, To jump on to the agenda for the day, um, in your opinion, how important is data analytics and artificial intelligence in improving the accuracy of underwriting decisions? I mean, you know, underwriting is one of the critical uh, phase or critical part of the value chain in the insurance uh, industry. And it'll be very interesting to understand how data analytics and AI is actually going to transform the accuracy part of underwriting. Absolutely. I, I think this is a topic that everyone right, is, is talking about. I think these are two of the most critical areas to understand and get right in terms of transforming commercial insurance and the future of underwriting. So I'll say other than talent, I would argue that data is the most valuable resource of an insurance carrier. And the value of the data is not going to be realized if we're not able to interrogate, liberate, and transform that data to utilize the deep insights um, that are available. So I think insurers really need to think both about their talent and data strategy, really in terms of how to liberate the vast data that exists within a carrier's um, landscape, right? So I think one is we need to think about ways to collect and acquire the data and then consume it. So that is going to require data transformation schemes, um, robust data governance practices to be able to, to take that data and then consume it. And then on the AI side is the ethical AI identification, right? So having ways to identify bias and how the data is used and the creation of those algorithms, I think will be absolutely critical as well. Um, And really look across the underwriting framework, those common activities in the life cycle of underwriting, really from, you know, assessing the opportunity through task automation, the rules driven approach through predictive analytics, and then ultimately the path for algorithmic and augmented underwriting um, using data enrichment and risk vi- visualization methodologies. So it it is critically important. I mean, we see just the, the rapid change, the nature of change, the velocity of change, how it continues to in- increase. And so as an industry, we need to really adapt and use these new tools and techniques to extract all of that value embedded in the data that we've collected throughout the years, and then be able to make it useful, right, to help uh, underwriters make better decisions. I'll I'll add, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I I was going to say, you know, I think in my experience, right, one of the big challenges that underwriters have is that while there's a lot of data that's out there, it's really difficult to to take all of it and make sense out of it, right? So uh, even when you think about things like underwriting guidelines, right? (laughs) You look at a commercial insurance carrier and you have an underwriting sitting in a middle markets or a national accounts uh, line of business unit. And there's so many underwriting guidelines that could come up or be necessary. And so for an underwriter to even kind of keep those 
in the forefront of when do I apply these guidelines, it's really challenging. So even from a, a not just the accuracy of decisions, but also incorporating and following those guidelines, I think all of this technology kind of comes together from bringing the vast data that, that's available, combining that with what are the guidelines or what are those things just in time that I need to be thinking about, and then being able to make the right decision at the right time and being partnered with technology is going to be really important. Very interesting. You know, uh, it's a, it's, there's a very important part you said during the start of the conversation that a, apart from talent, data is critical, right? So it's, it's a little off the topic, but I'm very curious to understand your opinion that, you know, the, the more AI or technologies like blockchain or particularly the AI, even, you know, the, the newly, uh, uh, which is in, uh, the new technology that's in the market, which is generative AI. There's mm-hmm. a scare that's going on, going on in the market that, you know, the, the more the technology evolves, uh, human skills or the need of human talent might be, you know, might reduce or might be under threat. So I, I really love the way you started that apart from talent, data is critical. So do you, how, what's your opinion, especially from the insurance sector, that intervention of data, intervention of AI, where the space of talent remains in the next 10 years? That's that's a really good question. And that's actually something I'm one very passionate about is how do we think about talent when attracting talent to the industry? So it's it's no secret that in the insurance industry and the sector, we certainly have uh, a need for new talent, right? We've a, a large part of the Uh, industry today is at or near retirement age. So we definitely need to attract the best and the brightest to uh, the insurance industry. So that's, that's one piece, right? Um, And then secondly, it's when I think about AI technology, and this is one for insurance, but really, as you think about, you know, the World Economic Forum uh, talks about what are those skills that are going to be required over the next, you know, five, 10 years, Uh, critical thinking, creativity, data analysis become more and more important along with influencing and the human, the human aspect, right? Bringing together that uh, emotional intelligence along with the analytics actually becomes more important because that creativity is not something that you, that you're going to see from uh, a computer, right? From, from, from a system, so yeah. that actually, it's interesting, right? Because the more we have a partnership with uh, AI, right, the more we actually can spend time being creative. And I think on the art of underwriting, as opposed to on the menial tasks, which I can tell you, most underwriters don't want to spend time on that. They don't want to spend time entering data from one system to another or from a document that they received into a system. They want to spend time being creative to solve a client's problems, to really think about what what are the things that add value to this client, to this customer. And I think that's really what's going to transform the industry is that we're going to move away from the mundane tasks. Those really will be automated and then it becomes a partnership and I can spend time on the things that add more value to my customers. Yep, that yep. also will, will turn from you know, addressing risks after the fact to being more proactive and saying, how can we focus on risk avoidance? How can we help you match capital to your risk throughout, not just at the, at the term, right? Not on an, just on an annual basis, but really throughout your business cycle. How do we help you prepare for, you know, maybe branching out into uh, other markets? What does your risk to capital matching look like? And so I think that's where where we're really going to see some exciting change. Yeah, you know, but personally, I feel it's like the developments or the you know transformation that's happening in the healthcare sector, for example. This technology intervention, this AI, this blockchain, this uh, robotics, and so on and so forth. But the medical professional is such that, for example, a doctor, he or she has to keep upskilling 
upskill themselves, right? There will be technologies, mm-hmm. there will be new stuffs coming in, but the talent, which is the medical professionals or the doctors and the nurses, they have to upskill themselves continuously. And that's where the importance will lie. And similarly to other industries as well, you know, we, we have to upskill with the technology uh, evolution. We can't be stagnant with the skill set or the knowledge that we have today. And in, in real terms, it is, it's really not a threat to talent, but it's just that how we present ourselves with the skills and knowledge that we have to make it market relevant. I, I completely agree. And, and I would add that as carriers, right, as organizations start to invest in this technology and they start to transform their operations, it's really going to be key to keep the human side of change and transformation in mind. So how do you help alleviate some of those concerns? Anytime you have any type of transformational change, I can tell you in my own experience working, you know, on on transformational initiatives and projects, change management is really a key to yeah. the success. It's yeah. going to be really Very difficult true. to realize the benefits if you don't bring the people along, right? The yeah. strength of an organization is, as we said, in the data and and its talent. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, very interesting point. And, uh, you know, just moving on to the next uh, agenda f- for the session, mm-hmm. how can insurers balance the need for more personalized and efficient customer experience with the need to maintain appropriate level of risk management and underwriting scrutiny. You know, it's it's difficult. It, it's always easy to say or, you know, you know how you know, technologies like AI and others are going to impact, but the most critical part of any industry is the customer, right? And mm-hmm. so how, how exactly would insurers keep that balance is, is, is the question and you know something that we would really love to know from your point of view yeah so so I really don't think that these two concepts are mutually exclusive I think they're actually quite complementary so when we think about the need for for one personalized and efficient ex- customer experiences I think the technology actually allows us to meet the customers where they are so we've got different customer profiles right we understand that some profiles Some customers have profiles where they really want to have self-service. I want things that are at my fingertips. I want an experience that is relatively hands-off while I have other customers that really want a risk partner. They want to be engaged. They really need more, um, more of that experiential relationship, right? And so one is I think the technology and the changes that we anticipate coming will help us, will help the industry meet customers where they are, which generally the insurance, commercial insurance industry in particular, hasn't adopted, right, as much of the technology has been a bit behind in, for example, what we see in finance sector or in personal lines um, insurance, where there's a bit more of, of, you know, what you expect even as a as a consumer right just you and i as consumers kind of what is our experience i'll say commercial carriers have have lagged behind there a bit so i think one that'll address some of that and help carriers meet insurers where they are but also i think it's really important that insurers have the responsibility to rethink their data strategy and the governance practices so it's understanding what's the friction in the value chain so what customers want, what value overlays those themes, where are their inefficiencies in their current operating model, and then being able to identify what changes are required to those people, processes, tools to deliver that customer experience. I can tell you in my own experience, you know, I've seen where we've had um, looked at our underwriting process in the past and how much of the data that was being received actually aligned with what we were what we needed in order to make underwriting decisions and found that approximately 65 percent of what we were looking at was either incomplete or inaccurate and so really took the approach to say what what can we get from the customer or do we absolutely need to get from the customer versus what can we get from 
third parties, right? And so looking at the different sources where you can either validate or extract data from other sources and you can reduce the friction with the customer, what we found was by implementing changes, we actually improved the quality of the underwriting decisions by as much as 20 points and the quality of the data. So it actually, I think, helps to reduce the friction when you can extract data from different sources, improve the quality of your data, improve the quality of your decisions, and actually reduce the burden on the customer. Yeah, I mean, some absolutely valid points that you have brought in. Uh, you know, but do you, do you think insurers strike the right balance between automation and human expertise in underwriting, particularly in complex and high-risk commercial insurance cases? Yeah, I, I would say that today, in my experience, uh, in those complex cases, I think that there's a lot of opportunities to improve automation, right? So that can work for small commercial. Automation, algorithmic underwriting can work in small commercial, but it doesn't work for large complex risks. And I think we're at a point now where we can challenge that and say, no, there's opportunities actually where we can continue to have that human relationship, that really you no know, close client relationship, um, while still leveraging automation to improve those things that that AI is really good at, right? That data analytics is really good at, and be able to surface that to an underwriter to be able to make better decisions, even for those complex risks. So I, I don't I actually don't think we're doing a great job at striking the balance in the industry today because we're not there's so much data that exists in carrier uh, ecosystem that that sometimes they just don't have access to. It's not always presented in the right place at the right time to be able to help an underwriter make a meaningful decision. You know, un- underwriting is such a function that how ex- it's not directly related to the end consumers, but the operation that the work they do is actually affecting or impacting the end users. So it's, it's a very valid point that you've ma- made there. And I, the, the striking the right balance is definitely the key and how exactly it will be executed makes more sense that how uh, this function would actually be successful. Yeah, I think a good example of that, you know, again, if we think about that kind of risk to capital matching, right? So if I am a... Uh, a client and I'm, let's say, in in the Midwest and I'm, or in Texas and I I have oil uh, wells that I I drill oil and I want to expand to a particular area or I want to, you know, go into um, green energies, for example, right? I want to diversify my portfolio today, you know, is that, is that a conversation that is, that, an underwriter is having with that client or is the client making decisions? And then at the time that they're going to uh, renew their policies or they're you know, really thinking about what does this mean from a risk to capital matching? I think that's where really there's that partnership and that opportunity for an underwriter to be a risk partner and say, here's the implications, right? If you think about what you want to achieve, How can we help you match your capital to that risk so that you can make more informed decisions as an organization? And so that really, and having data that supports it, real-time data that I can say, I'm going to model this. If if my client's operations changed and they were in this geography or in this sector, what does that mean? And then that helps that client be able to make better um, decisions. Really, I think that's the value of having data that's available to an underwriter so that they can better partner and provide better customized solutions to their clients. We have touched, I think, one of the key strings in this underwriting function. I mean, thank you so much for the fantastic discussion and thank you for sharing your thoughts. It was a true delight to have you as our guest. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity. And lastly, to wrap this up, thank you for listening and see you on the next episode. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye for now.